Hi, we're at IBC 2017, and I'm here with Chris Knowlton, who's a partner and chief strategist at Blue Frame Technology. Hi, Chris, how are you? I'm good, Brian, thanks. Uh, good, and we're gonna be talking a little bit today how Blue Frame Technologies has built in secure, reliable transport, the SRT protocol, into the product. Right, so absolutely, yeah, we're, we definitely see a need for it, and we're happy to jump on it and see if we can help some of our customers solve some of their problems. And speaking specifically about that, before we can jump in the presentation and the demo, is what problems are they having? Why have you guys actually you know, enabled SRT in the product? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of our customers are Division II and Division III colleges without big broadcast budgets and not necessarily great infrastructure for delivering a broadcast from a remote field or an old venue. They don't have good bandwidth out. Sometimes they're over an extended Wi-Fi network or maybe a mobile hotspot. And the, that, that bandwidth coming out of there can be a little bit unreliable, a little bit sketchy. And so sometimes they can't get a very good stream out to the cloud where we can deliver it for them. And having SRT cleans up a lot of that noise that we tend to see in the signal and gives us a better signal at a lower bit rate. Yeah, I think it's true. We've been in the streaming industry for a long time, and, and I think we've seen that the number one problem is always at the first mile. And garbage in, garbage out. If we don't get all you know the quality that we can at the ingest point, then it's going to be terrible all the way down the, the, the live streaming cycle. Absolutely right. We, we had focused for many years on sort of the last mile, and but from a content production standpoint, in a live production, having that first mile bandwidth and, and clear signal from point A to point B is so critical. So maybe jump in and t tell a little bit about Blueframe technology and how you guys have actually enabled SRT. Sure, I'd be happy to, yeah. So let's start off with just a little bit of information. Uh, Blue Frame Technology is a company that focuses on providing an end-to-end -end solution and all the parts thereof to uh, various colleges, uh, sporting, you know, pr uh, professional minor league sports, uh, division one minor sports, things like that. Focusing sort of on the long tail of sports as opposed to those, you know, the 64 division one schools that you typically associate with big broadcasters like ESPN. And so one of our products is called Production Truck. It provides, uh, you'll see four camera angle switching, instant replay, graphics integration, the ability to create a very seamless experience with professional looking graphics and scoreboard integration right at the venue and push it out with a single person as opposed to multiple people. And one of the things I like about Production Truck is the whole multi-cam experience is you can pull in uh, IP sources from a variety of things, whether it be a, a physical camera on the device, a USB camera, or even over NDI, you can use the NDI protocol to pull in IP camera That's feeds. That's right, it's very robust that way. It allows you to bring in almost any feed that you might have available to you, whether it's on the network or physically connected. We have lots of folks who use uh, HDMI and SDI as well, and you can bring that in through various adapters through the Thunderbolt port on a MacBook Pro like this. Yeah, like a Made to All capture card or something That's like right, that. That's right, or a, a DeckLink Duo box that allow you to bring in four cameras simultaneously. Our second product is called vCloud. This is a cloud-based system that allows you to manage all of your broadcasts, and once they go directly from live to VOD assets without changing any URLs, uh, you can also go in and manage all your VOD assets, including things like geo-blocking, distribution, uh, paywall authorization if you want to do pay-per-view or subscription model. And of course, with vCloud, this is where you have the Wowza integration. That's right, it's powered by Wowza Streaming Engine, and that's, one of, that's why we're here today, because we, we recognize that Wowza Streaming Engine gives us that great flexibility to bring almost anything in and anything out and do it in a very robust way and scale it very nicely in the cloud. And so that's what we've built this platform on. The third part for us is just that idea of creating a digital presence for all of our customers. So many of them have, uh, you know, would, would like to be on ESPN or Fox or CBS Sports or something like this, but don't uh, have that capability because they're not a big enough school. And what we do is allow those smaller schools to create that sort of same sort of presence where somebody can go to a single website, a single mobile app, or a single OTT app on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and have this great big screen experience just like the folks watching ESP on, on the next channel over. And so they get to have that presence to reach out to their alumni, their donors, their fans, their potential students that they're trying to recruit. They can say, just go watch our game on Saturday. That could be you next year. And so it's a great tool for the colleges to extend their brand and, and you know, further their mission. And then there's another aspect to it, and that's social media. We've integrated this right in so you can highlight, take an instant replay or a highlight clip, trim it in real time, send that out to an audience through Twitter uh, or Facebook, and 
thereby engage that audience that may not be watching your game yet and pull them in. And we see that every time uh, there's a game online and a school does this, or a conference does this with a championship, for instance, uh, that we see that stair step effect where the volume goes up, the, the number of people watching every time they go and tweet this live clip of a cool play, it just brings more viewers on. So it's sort of self-perpetuating. And then we also have the ability to drop a Twitter feed on top of your live stream going out. So the audience that's responding to your content is sort of now giving that feedback and further engaging that virtuous cycle to bring people on board. So you're getting the benefit of social media during the live broadcast, but also as VOD clips produced from... That's right. Yeah, all those clips that you grab either for social media or as instant replay can be saved and then used later. And you can create highlight reels out of those and put them up as uh, sort of teaser reels and highlight clips, as, to your point. Absolutely. Yeah. And then there's a fifth part I don't even mention here, but I sort of alluded to it earlier, and that's that idea of monetization. The fact that you can put in front of all your customers, regardless of which platform they're on, a simple little paywall uh, viewing experience that allows them to ask to download a, a piece of content, maybe pay for it, maybe they subscribe to a season or to a championship, uh, or maybe it's just a pay-per-view. But any way you want to do, or, or could even do, be as simple as signing in so you know who your, your viewers are. So all of the schools that we deal with have used all of these different models depending on what their business goals are. Sometimes just giving it away for free with no paywall, and other times doing it this way to help monetize and uh, you know, defer some of the cost of actually doing the broadcast. Okay, so I wanted to give you a, just a quick example of how one particular conference uses these different products that I'm showing you. The first is uh, referring here to Southland Conference. Now, they've been using some other products like TriCasters and other things in a production flow that they already had set up where they'd already purchased the equipment. They had the budget for it when they were working with uh, American Sports Network in the past few years. And so they already had the equipment and they have a separate graphics injection. So they end up bringing their live signal from this existing production equipment into production truck. There we encode it. We grab instant replays for them. We grab social highlights. They can then push that out to their social media feeds, uh, and then save the content. And of course, at the same time, they're now also delivering it across OTT, so mobile apps, desktop, uh, and, and those different streaming devices. So this gives them the over-the-air broadcast that they've been using. They pull that off, run it through production truck, and now they get all the advantages of uh, OTT, IP type feed, and delivery. The other thing they do is they use all of our, our full stack, all the features of Production Truck plus vCloud and everything else as well to also create their own content where they're not just pulling off uh, production using that existing equipment that's also going over the air. So it's using just a simple laptop and one connection up to the cloud and then pushing out things like coaches call-in shows and, and other event that sort of augments what they're doing with the over-the-air broadcasts. And I already referred to the weekly call-in shows, and so they do some interesting things there where they can have folks you know, write in on the same web page, bring in chat questions for the coaches, the coaches answer it in real time. So kind of interesting stuff that way. All these various different uses. So the, with SRT, let's talk about what a typical use case looks like there. In that case, I mentioned we might have you know, a stadium like this that's a remote venue, maybe a great stadium, but not have any internet infrastructure to speak of. And so typically they'll have, you know, and this is a baseball diamond type situation, they might have four cameras, one behind home plate, one down first and third baselines, and one out in center field zooming in to see across the pitcher's shoulder into the batter's box. And so typically that would all run in here, you have your four cameras coming in, but now the challenge is getting that signal out, right? If Maybe they have, if they're lucky, maybe they've put a Wi-Fi extender off the top of the gym a mile down the road or something, and they're trying to tap into the, the Wi-Fi network on campus, but it may be a rough signal, you know? And it may change, of course, as, as conditions change, right? Well, what we're trying to do is get it up to vCloud, uh, which has well, as a streaming engine on it, and then, and then make our delivery to all these end units. The challenge here, of course, is just that connection area. And that's what SRT is really solving for us. It's really improving that connection. Yep. So production truck, just to, to highlight a few of the things I mentioned, just, you know, it's HD video, it's four camera angles. You create these video clips on the fly, social sharing. So I didn't really mention it has a scoreboard integration. I'll show you that in a second. We also do some picture in picture, which is great if you want to have two different things, like you're actually doing an interview with a coach on the field, but you have the game in the background. Or if you have a, uh, maybe you have a scoreboard where you don't have an integration, where you can't pull the score right into production truck and have it do all the incrementing for you, you can actually just point at the scoreboard or at the, or at the time clock 
and just put that overlay that on the screen so you don't have to have somebody manually advancing or stopping the clock as the game progresses. Absolutely. I think the great thing about production truck is that, and I love the name because it literally does replace an entire production truck. That's the idea, so, yeah. And, and not just that, it can also do it over IP instead of having to get a dedicated satellite dish for a particular event. That's right. I mean, you're looking at a, at a twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar production level in a piece of software, which is really, really refreshing. Yeah, exactly. It's funny, I saw a tweet uh, before I came on today that told people, hey, you should go see this $20 million production truck sitting out in the parking lot. And my thought was, no, you should come inside and see this $495 production truck running on a Mac where you're not having to tow a trailer or get gear or get 13 people to staff it or a satellite connection to, to make that connection back to the station. Yeah, and I think the reality is you're always going to have tier one equipment, tier one production, but what this does is it really democratizes being able to add that kind of professional editing, professional workflow, and professional turnkey solution yeah, for everyone, even exactly tier right. threes and others that really can't get into and afford a, a large production workflow like that. Yep, that's right. So let me show you production truck real quick. This is what that interface looks like when you see it a little bit up front here. Uh, so four camera angles coming in. In this case, we just have a couple of cameras attached because I'm just running on a MacBook Air. So, simple swipe, custom integration, custom, sorry, custom uh, graphics like this that you can create. So you have that kind of great professional looking experience while you're switching between cameras. Yeah, and we should add the cameras here are really, you know, small, you know, USB cameras, this yeah, the tech one. This, this is not an indication of camera quality or exactly. lighting quality. That's in what this I was going to say. You Just can plug in up to, you know, very high resolution cameras into this that are very, to pr produce that nice effect. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, as I said, create, you know, do, uh, instant replays, capture replay, uh, bring in video clips. If you have some like an interview you've done just before the game, you could bring that in during a break and play that over the top. And as far as like ingest and then as well output, what is the resolution that you support with Production Truck? Up to 1080p. Okay. Yeah, most of our customers today are not really focused on 4K, but uh, some of them are focused on 1080p and having that great view uh, experience on the big screen. And 1080p provides a pretty good uh, way to do it and still maintain a lower bandwidth out of the venue. And then there's some other things you can do. You can apply, um, you know, I mentioned graphics earlier. You can overlay something like a scoreboard on there. You know, it's got nice looking scoreboard, just as you might see on ESPN or somewhere else. And, and of course, you can be controlling the game clock uh, or the scoreboard manually here, or you can tie it in with something like a scorebot, which is actually reading the data right off the scoreboard and putting it in here for you. So you can focus on things like the social media clips and switching angles rather than focusing on the scoreboard. I should show you how the SRT integration works. One way you can do it is manually, you can actually tie in an SRT URL now. Just as you used to tie in RTSP or RTMP, we'll add the SRT here in the UI shortly. But we've just integrated this in the last couple of weeks, and now you can just type in an SRT URL, and, and vCloud will recognize that and pull it in using secure, reliable transport. Uh, and for those who aren't, who aren't aware, maybe, the SRT Alliance is an alliance that was started by Wowza and by High Vision. High Vision being an encoder manufacturer. And they had actually invented this protocol as a way to actually improve data delivery over dirty networks like the public internet. Right. And the idea is that SRT has now been made an open source piece of software. Um, you guys have actually joined up to be a member of the SRT Alliance. That's right. And then you downloaded the actual um, code, the SDK from GitHub, you're able to embed that into the Blue Core software. Yeah, exactly. It didn't take us very long to do it, about a day to get it, get it in there, and then a couple of days just to testing to make sure it worked well. One of the things that we'll be able to do today, I showed you sort of the manual integration where you just type in a URL. One of the things that we make it do, uh, we do to make it easier for folks who are not even broadcasters, you know, like putting a, a, an athletic director may put a student in front of production truck 10 minutes before a game, and they'll put out a nice production. They don't have to know what an RTMP URL is. They can just go up here to a pick list and pick whatever broadcast the admin for that site or that school has put up there for them. So I might see here, you know, men's volleyball at eight and uh, you know, football game at nine, whatever it is, and they can just pick it. They never even have to type in that SRT URL. So it's basically abstracting that SRT implementation one more level to make it even more simple. Yeah, especially when you look at a lot of schools, you get a lot of volunteers who work. They're they're there. They're you know they're helping out with the production. So having a very easy interface and an easy kind of workflow it really helps things. That's right. Getting these advanced streaming features without having to understand what's going on under the covers. Absolutely. Very nice. So with vCloud, that's just uh, I mentioned. It's sort of a managed service running on top of Wow's streaming engine. It allows you to very easily monitor all your broadcasts. You may have a list of broadcasts. You'll see if they're running here. They'd be color coded so you know exactly what their health is, what their state is. Uh, you get a bunch of tools very easily here that allow you to go and monitor each one very quickly as an administrator, whether you're a site admin or just sort of supporting the stream. 
Um, but it comes with a lot of nice features on top of that. Um, we mentioned 1080p, the fact that it does adaptive bitrate streaming for you know optimized mobile delivery, syndicating. So not only can you deliver, of course, to your own site and players, but you can also deliver to Facebook Live and YouTube Live, making the great use of the syndication features and Wow's streaming engine. Uh, compatibility, we can deliver over multiple protocols and receive from multiple protocols. We deliver you your own portal page that you can show up on your web page. You just embed it with a line of code, mm -hmm. so you don't have to do any web page design, but you get this nice custom branded image both there and in your apps. Uh, a few other things, phone call support included for free with, as part of the, the, the service. Uh, Pay-per-view we mentioned, consistent branding as, a, as an admin for say a conference or a school, you can specify that all the broadcasts that your, your students or, or volunteers are creating have a consistent look and feel with colors and logos and everything that you as an admin prefer and you can templatize all that, which is awesome because now you, you know that the volleyball and the football experience are going to look pretty similar even though you have different graphics that are specific for those sports, you'll have a good look and feel and everyone will know, oh, that is my school's broadcast because you can tell just by the way they're, they're bring up the logos and using the colors. So it's just great for that building that consistent branding experience. So when you're creating a broadcast, uh, this is sort of the simple things you have to do. There are really only three fields that you have to fill in. They're starred here in red. What section or what sport, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so this might be football. Put in a title for it and then put in what date and time you want it to start. That's all you have to do. All the other stuff is typically set in advance as part of a broadcast template data um, uh, a broadcast template where the, the admins already filled out all this data, which it could include now SRT as the default protocol to use, where, again, you don't have to go into production truck and set it. It just automatically comes up as default as soon as you load that broadcast from the pick list. So I thought I'd show you an example. We did some testing the, the last week using SRT and RTMP and UDP and then source and played it all back with 2% packet loss just to see what would happen. And you can see UDP drops pack, it's of course, it, it has a very bad experience. You see all this blocking and all these, you know. Artifacts. Yeah. Definitely artifacts, macro blocking, not a very good experience at all. Even RTMP, which would normally be very resilient if you're trying to do it with low latency especially, starts dropping some of the data and it starts getting a little fuzzy. But our source and SRT still look pristine. And that's exactly what we're going for for those e venues that are older or don't have great internet connection. I think, I think it was something to be said here. It's not just the quality, it's also the reliability. Sometimes when you have packet loss, you actually get a break in the connection. So with SRT, it does a better job of actually maybe uh, prioritizing which packets get across. First of all, establish a secure connection. Second of all, you know, do these packets, that are the algorithms within it that really make those intelligent decisions to make it almost imperceptible, the packet loss that you see. That's right, that's a really great point. It's one of the things that we like is that, to your point, it's it's sometimes just, you know, they can get a connection, and it starts well, and then it drops, and then it goes up, and uh, that can be problematic, both in terms of visual acuity, and, and then, of course, just the way the software responds to it, you know? So yeah, and I think the key here is that SRT doesn't do anything to help you with the packet loss. The packet loss is going to happen. Absolutely. If, they, if you don't have a yeah, big yeah. enough pipe and you're trying to s stuff data down there and you don't have it, you're going to have packet loss. It's how you handle the packet loss. That's really what SRT is able to do. Yeah. Perfect. So that's just an example so you can see what the benefits are of what SRT is able to do for us and how we plan to help our customers. So that's really it. That's just sort of the overview of production truck and vCloud and how we've implemented SRT with the help of Wowza streaming engine and uh, how we think that'll help our customers.